major stories lead tonight's news. President Ford has signed the tax cut bill. We'll have details on that later in the broadcast. In South Vietnam, Da Nang has become a Dunkirk with one crucial difference. Unlike Dunkirk in World War II, Da Nang is stricken with rampant panic. As the enemy approaches, the panic has swept from the coastal city's crowded back streets and pagodas onto runways at the airport. Ed Daly, president of World Airways, has been flying refugees to Saigon. But today, the government and the U.S. Embassy refuse to guarantee airport security because of mobs rushing the planes. Despite that, Daly flew in today to pick up women and children. CBS News correspondent Bruce Dunning was among the last of the Americans to leave Da Nang late this week, but he went back aboard Daly's plane today to witness what was supposed to have been a mission of mercy. Here is Dunning's exclusive film report on the tragic results. Reports from Saigon said thousands of people were roaming Da Nang airfield. But as the plane landed, this did not at first seem evident. But then people poured from behind buildings and revetments, racing on cars, jeeps, trucks, Hondas, and on foot, desperate to get to the plane and make sure they got on before anyone else. One guy got on. As soon as the rear stairway was lowered, the stampede of terrorized people tried to storm the plane. From the cockpit, the pilots reported by radio that the situation was out of control. Several times, the pilots moved the plane, hoping to break the crowds around the rear ladder. There was no control. High-ranking officers in Da Nang have fled, leaving soldiers and airmen to fend for themselves. The hordes tried to jam up the stairway as Daly himself tried to block the stairs. As men clamored over one another, pushing aside women and children in their panic-stricken fury, members of the air crew dragged them onto the plane, trying to fill it as fast as possible. The tension and panic intensified. The heavily armed men were menacing. They left their wives, their children, their aged parents on the runway while they forced their own way on board, a rabble of young enlisted men. CBS News cameraman Mike Marriott and sound man Mai Van Duk dared not leave the plane, aware they might not be able to get back on. One newsman was left behind as the crowd pushed him out of reach of the plane. The stewardesses dragged people on and rushed them to seats, screaming all the while, where are the women and children? They piled four, five, and six men into seats intended for three. Finally, there was room for no more. The plane began to move as people still clambered up the ladder. Angry men left behind fired pistols and automatic weapons at the plane, determined that no one would go if they couldn't. A grenade went off under one wing, damaging it. Unable to move on the blockaded runway, the plane raced down the taxiway, swerving to avoid vehicles, perhaps even running over people. As the plane strained laboriously into the air, people were still clinging to the wheels and the rear stairs. Seven men fell off as the plane reached heights of a thousand feet or more. As the plane reached 6,000 feet, one man was still stuck in the ladder. Daly had to climb out and pull him back as the plane swerved and shuddered under its heavy load. As calm fell on the smug men who had managed to fight off their friends and relatives to get on, the hard-working cabin crew took account. 268 people were on board, among them five women and two or three small children. The rest were some of the men whom President Chu said would defend Da Nang. They had no apparent feelings about leaving others behind, only gratitude that World Airways had saved their lives, with a flight that Ed Daly intended for refugee women and children. Once in flight at low altitude because the damaged rear stairway wouldn't close, the pilots assessed the damage to the plane. Bullets had damaged gas lines, and the plane was losing fuel. The pilots were not sure the wheels would function on landing because people had attempted to hide in the wheel wells. The flight from Da Nang to Saigon normally takes about 50 minutes. This one took more than an hour and a half. Another World Airways plane flew alongside, trying to assess the damage, and reported that the cargo hatches were open and full of people. Uh, do you think the nose gear will come down? I can't tell you. Can't tell. I don't want to check it till we get in closer. Uh, that's the uh, biggest uh, biggest problem I see at the moment here. Long nine four five clear to cycle. Uh, there's something uh, hanging down in the gear. Uh, 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 my gear doors. It may be a body. Did you say a body? Well, uh, I can't tell. It sure looks like it. Could be. We had them climbing all over. One man on the escort plane said that that crew was praying for us on the damaged plane.
Not knowing whether the wheel assemblies would hold, the flight crew put the plane, almost empty of fuel, down very gingerly on the runway at Saigon. And the deserters on board cheered. As the plane taxied to a parking place, soldiers poured out of the luggage holds. As cameraman Marriott was filming the unloading, a South Vietnamese Air Force security officer arrested him for taking these pictures. The Air Force had things under control again. But the men and women of World Airways had brought their plane and its load home. Bruce Denning, CBS News.